This week's episode is all about building great teams. Now, in my mind, a great team is not just one that gets things done effectively, but it's one that delivers great work. The teams that make change happen, the teams that fundamentally improve the lives of the people around them. However, when it comes to teams, I always believe in Murphy's Law, which is, if anything can possibly go wrong, it will. And the reason for that is because people are involved. People, people with diverse backgrounds, people with a multitude of interests and things that they want to get done that are personal to them, people with conflicting ideas, people add complexity. But if you get it right, it's like alchemy. You can turn that disparate group of people into something that can deliver something extraordinary. So that's today's topic, building great teams that deliver great work. Let's get started. So as I said, this week's episode is all about building great teams. Now, there are lots of books out there on how to build teams. One of my favorites is The 17 Indisputable Laws of Teamwork by John Maxwell. Amazing book. I really recommend it. But what I've done for you today is distilled all of that wisdom down to five vowels, A-E-I-O-U. And that's what we're going to use as our framework for trying to figure out what do we need to put in place to build a great team. So this is The Change Show with Simon Phillips. My aim is to provide you with ideas, insights and inspiration so that you can go out there and make a difference. And one of the easiest things you can do, because none of us can do this on our own, is share this content with a friend of yours or someone who you believe has their mindset on helping others. And what we're going to discover today is how we can do that, how we can go out there and make a difference. So five vowels then. A. A is all about align. As you get your team started, help them understand why they're doing this. What's the purpose? How does this project that you're working on fit with a bigger picture? Providing people with a bigger picture is always a good thing to do. Even those who like to focus on the the details and work out how things get done between here and here, love that clarity. So that's what you need to do, first of all. You need to align your team with what it is, the organization or the community or even the big program that you're working on. How does your team play a vital role? And on to the E. The E of great teams is energy. And guess what? You've got to provide it. If you're the leader of that team and you go out there with no energy whatsoever, who's going to follow you? If your energy levels don't get beyond maybe even a two out of ten, nobody's going to feel inspired. Come on, you've got to build your energy up. People like to see that their leader is enthusiastic about the project, has a real energy for what we're trying to achieve. That energy is what will communicate itself and imbue them with a sense of urgency and a sense of dedication. If you're going to lead change, it takes time. It takes a lot of effort. It takes, it will require your team to overcome a whole load of hurdles. So they're going to need energy for that and you're the barometer. So that's E. Onto the I. I is all about be inclusive. The best sports teams have people who can contribute to every level, right down to the lowest level on the bench, if you like. But that person there could play a vital role, come off the bench and win the game in the last minute, but not if they're unmotivated. So your job as the leader of a team is to include everyone. Make sure that you're thinking in a diverse way. Make sure you're seeking ideas and thoughts and inputs from every member of the team. Everyone has unique perspectives. Everyone will have a different way of thinking about a problem. Your job is to tune into that because some of their unique perspectives will provide breakthroughs and it won't always be from your star players in the team. 
So design for inclusivity. Work out how you're going to constantly get inputs from everyone that's involved. And what you'll do is you'll kill that insipid seed of resentment that happens when everybody looks around and sees just one or two key players doing everything, being asked to lead everything. And actually, all that does is uninspire everyone else. So that, oh, you'll like this one. Just get organized. And getting organized at a team level is all about making sure you have sufficient resources. You have backing. The people who've asked for the work that you and your team are doing are 100% behind you. And if they're not, your job is to go and ask why. So once you're resourced, make sure you've got some routines mapped out as well. Routines can transform any team into something that can deliver consistently at a high quality. But people need to know what they're doing and how they're doing it and when they're doing it and who's going to be working on the next part of the process so that they can hand it over to them. And finally, the you as the leader of a team driving change, you need to create a culture of us, not of me. There are no stars in a real team. The people who maybe have a star performance every now and again should be made aware that they can't do it on their own. Stars need teams around them to perform at the highest levels. But if you focus all the time on those stars, you actually reduce the capability of the rest of your team. So always talk about we, talk about us. So there you go, the A-E-I-O-U of building great teams teams that can deliver great work. As I said earlier, making change happen is tough. It can take a long time. So you need to, as a leader, get some of these fundamentals right so that your team is in it for the long game. So how's your team looking? Is it aligned? Are the energy levels high? Does it feel like an inclusive environment where everybody's opinions matter? Are you organized? And is there a culture of us? Okay, I hope that was useful. Share this with somebody else that might find this helpful and I'll see you again next week.